Hi, and welcome to the Craft Channel in association with Paper Crafter magazine. I'm here to show you the exclusive free gift we have on issue 89 of Paper Crafter, out on sale the 20th of November. It's a great mini paper crimper, and I'm going to show you how to use it. Once you've unpackaged it, it is very simple. You can hold it in one hand and turn the wheel with the other. So, you can get great crimp effects on card. You just put it on a flat surface, and this is a great thing, you don't need three hands. Pop it on a flat surface to get it started, and then just turn your wheel, and it gives a great corrugated effect on card, and it will work on paper, it will work on cardstock, probably up to about 280 GSM, I would have thought. The other thing to make something like this snowflake card that we have here is uh, if you get some communal garden kitchen foil, and I've actually glued two pieces of foil together just with a prick stick and let it dry, and then you can pop it through your ribbler again. Oh, now foil isn't that easy to get it started because it does tend to bend, and it really doesn't want to do it this morning. Oh, it's because I'm turning the wheel the wrong way. There you go. Just pop it through. and you get a great crimped foil, and it really gives quite a nice glittery effect. The other thing I've made is this star decoration here, and as you'll see, it's actually too big to fit through the ribbler, it's too wide. So what we do is, get yourself some stars, these have just been die cut, and if you find the middle of your star by going from the inner point to the outer point and making a mark, and another inner point to an outer point and making a mark, this thing here, is your center point. So we'll cut from the inner points to the center. Try and make it as accurate as possible. Oh, she says, slipping the knife there. Because then that way, when you put it back together again, there'll be less gaps in there. And what you'll make is five diamond shapes. Each individual diamond shape is of course small enough to fit through the ribbler or the paper crimper. So just tuck it in. One. Another. Oh. And I'm doing these all so that they run the, the um, stripes in the paper run horizontally to the upright diamond or kite shape, but you can run it through any way you want. And then if you just take a glue dot, pop one on the back of there and just pop it onto an uncut diamond, uncut diamond, uncut star shape, just to hold the pieces together, you get a great effect. Oh, that glue dot didn't work. Oh, I don't think I've got a glue dot on that one either. See, the wonders of live demonstrating is that you do things in a hurry and they don't work. Here we go. So you would build it up like this and then lay a smaller version on top of that and a smaller one on that and then just cover the ends up with a circle. So you've got the... It's almost like a concentric circle effect when it comes out like that. But it's not just resigned for Christmas decorations, although we have got some fantastic ones here. This little penguin has been quilled from ribbled paper, and because it's the paper's been crimped, so it's almost corrugated, you don't need as much paper to build up a bigger um, element. So, love this little penguin. Very nice heart decoration here. That again, is done with quilled, um, crimped paper. We've got a selection of cards, and as I say, a paper crimper isn't just for Christmas. A cupcake card like this one here, you've got the creases running this way, on the base of it. I'll just tilt it here so you can see a bit of the shadow. And then if you put your icing pieces in in different directions, it really builds up a nice three-dimensional effect on the card. And it can also brighten up the simplest of scrapbook pages as well, just with these little pennants that we've got here. By running a piece of card diagonally through the ribbler, you can create like a chevron effect with the zigzags for a nice bright scrapbook page. So all sorts of things you can do with your ribbler. Don't be put off by the fact that you couldn't get a huge sheet of paper in there because you, the width on it is pretty big actually. The width on it is eight and a half centimetres. 
So it's probably plenty big enough for you to do all your card making projects. So go out and grab your next copy of Papercraft magazine. As I say, it's, uh, say it's on sale on the 20th of November in all good news agents. And uh, we'll see you again next time.